Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and here are my top 10 best PlayStation 5 games to play right now. So if you are a PS5 owner and you're wondering what games you should jump on next, hopefully today's video will give you some ideas. Now most of these, in fact 8 of them, I have completed or platinumed, so I've only included the games I've actually played. But before I start, let me know your favourite game or a PlayStation 5 game that everybody should play. Right, so there's no surprise that God of War Ragnarok has made it onto the list. For me, this was Game of the Year for 2022. Following on from God of War, which was released in 2018 on the PlayStation 4, you play as both Kratos and his son Atreus. You cross several realms fighting gods and monsters along the way, and some of the threats that you come up against include Freya, Thor and Odin, as well as some allies and interesting characters. Visually, this game is stunning, and some scenes are incredible, but the gameplay and the story is what really captured me. It runs at up to 120 frames per second, as well as supporting VRR, so it is very smooth, even during those intense fighting scenes. Although you don't need to have played the previous God of War as there is a recap video at the start of this game, I would still recommend playing it to get the most from the story. And since PlayStation have stopped making difficulty related trophies for their first party games, you can easily get the platinum for God of War if you put the time in. So if you're looking for an open world game where you can swing from the rooftops, you've got to give Spider-Man Miles Morales a go. Following on from the original Spider-Man while Peter is in Europe, Miles Morales steps in as New York superhero. It's a pretty short story overall, I think it comes in at around 8-10 to 10 hours, which for a single player game isn't much at all. And some of the fight scenes can be a little repetitive as you battle groups of thugs and enemies, but it is still a lot of fun with a great story. I also think that Miles is a brilliant character to play. And depending on which visual mode that you choose to run it at, you can get up to 120Hz and VRR in Performance Mode and Performance RT, and that's the mode that I usually go for. And I'll tell you what, it is smooth. I've played more than 32 hours on this game, and it is buttery smooth as you're swinging through New York City. Plus, visually, it looks awesome. Okay, so this next one I show quite a lot of my thumbnails here on YouTube, and that's Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. This is one of those games that's an easy play, loads of fun, and has great visuals and gameplay. It also makes great use of the DualSense controller features. You've got some great characters, including the obvious Ratchet, Clank, and Rivet, along with his self-proclaimed supervillain Dr. Nefarious. I've put just over 20 hours into it, probably a little less to get the Platinum, but with the 120Hz and VRR support, it looks incredible. Now, there are about 75 previous games in the series, and although you could play all of these to understand their characters a little bit better, there is no problem just jumping straight into Rift Apart. Plus, it's definitely the best looking one and incredibly vibrant as you travel through the different levels. Okay, so this next one is technically a PlayStation 5 game, but that's only because it's a remake of a PS3 and a PS4 game, and that's The Last of Us Part 1. Originally released back on the PlayStation 3 in 2013, and then remastered for the PS4 and remade for the PlayStation 5, so most of us have probably played this game one way or another, yet it still somehow made its way onto my top PlayStation 5 games to play. And that's because, although it follows the same story as the original, for me the visual improvements make this feel like a whole new game. Even so, that although I did complete it on both the PS3 and PS4, I still went ahead and got the Platinum on the PlayStation 5. You play as both Joel and Ellie, although only briefly, as you travel across a post-apocalyptic America. There are infected everywhere, including runners, bloaters, and the worst ones, clickers. I can imagine this game getting a lot of hype over the coming months with the recent release of the TV series, and rightfully so, as it's an incredible game and one of the best stories I've ever played. I know it doesn't look like it, but this here is not a bad read. Only one problem. Right there. To be continued. <sighs> I hate Cliff. Released in mid-2022, Stray is one of the most chill, simple, yet enjoyable games on the PlayStation 5. You play as a cat that is separated from its family as you navigate through 12 different levels, solving puzzles and helping residents as you go. The story is set in a cyber city where you have to escape and avoid various enemies while following a relatively linear path. Although I have finished the game, I'm yet to go back and clean up the trophies for the Platinum. It's also quite a short story as the game is around 5-6 to six hours to complete the main story. But if you like cats or you like an adventure game that is different to the norm, this is definitely worth playing. Now, if you didn't know this already, every PlayStation 5 comes pre-installed with Astro's Playroom, and although it is a free game, it's still one of the most fun games to play. If you've ever seen or played Astro Bot on the PlayStation 4, you'll know who this is, but you run around exploring several zones inside your PlayStation 5. There are some really cool Easter eggs in here as well, including some old PlayStation consoles and accessories. This area alone is worth exploring. 
Then when you go off and play the different levels, including Bot Beach, Render Forest and Gusty Gateway, you realise how every challenge and area is optimised for the PlayStation 5 controller. The haptic feedback and adaptive triggers really come to life in this game, and it shows just how awesome the DualSense controller is. And it's for this reason alone that every PS5 owner has got to play this game. So Gran Turismo 7 had a pretty horrible launch, there's no denying that. But if you want a graphically nice looking racing game with a variety of cars, it's really hard to pass on this one. The menus are a little clunky with this map-like design, but the races, handling, modifications and visuals are great. It's one of those games that I can pick up and play for a couple of hours when I don't have much time for anything else. Now I play it at 60 frames per second on the PlayStation 5 and it looks incredibly smooth. I know I should probably be playing this with a steering wheel rather than a controller, but even that still plays perfectly well but let me know what other racing games you would put ahead of GT7. So I've mentioned Miles Morales already, and if you opt for the ultimate edition of that, you will get the remastered version of the original Spider-Man game. For me, this is a huge step up from the PS4 version, as it also runs up to 120 frames per second and VRR. And that's if you're using the Performance or the Performance RT mode. Of course, there is the Fidelity mode, which does prioritise the resolution instead. You play as the classic Peter Parker, who, once bitten by a spider, gains those superhuman or super insect abilities, climbing walls and swinging through New York City. Throughout the game, you face several supervillains as well as hundreds of thugs and enemies that you need to fight off and defeat. If you've got the time to play through the story and find all of the collectibles scattered across the city, this is also a relatively easy platinum. I did play this on the PlayStation 4 as well as the PlayStation 5, so it's easily one of my top five games. Next up is Horizon Forbidden West, which is an open world third person RPG. It is also one of the best visually appealing games that you can play on the PS5 right now. It's set in a post-apocalyptic world, where it's futuristic with robots that resemble dinosaurs which have essentially taken over the world. I feel the combat, story and open world landscape makes this one of the most rewarding games that you can play. It of course follows on from the PlayStation 4 version of the game which was called Horizon Zero Dawn, so if you've played that game already, you'll want to jump straight into this one next. It is also incredibly smooth if you play it on the performance mode, which gives you up to 120Hz and VRR support. So I have completed the story and put in around 45 hours so far, but I will need to put a few more hours in to finish the trophies. And then we've got Kena Bridge of Spirits, which is one of the nicest games that I played in 2022 and was an easy game to add to the list. You play as a young girl called Kena traveling through a village that has been corrupted by spirits. And along the way you meet Rot, which are these little magical creatures that help you with your journey. They're kind of like little sidekicks. You've got different abilities and skills which you unlock as you play. And the more rot that you find, well that levels up your skills, which you will need later on for those combat and the puzzle areas. Then there's the sound design, visuals and story which are quite literally captivating. I have finished the game, but again I just need to go back and clean up some of those trophies. Right, so hear me out for a second, but Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone have made it onto my best PlayStation 5 games list. Now, I know it's full of glitches, SBMM and the awful UI, but there's still something about jumping online with my mates, squatting up and having a laugh that I've not been able to replicate in any other game. Personally, I still prefer multiplayer over Warzone, so modes like Domination and Prisoner Rescue are still my favourite. But even the campaign is worth playing, it's definitely one of the best campaigns that we've seen in recent years. So I'm not going to talk too much about Call of Duty, but it's still one of the best games that I like to play. I kind of see it as a bit of a guilty pleasure. Pair that with the 120Hz support and it's a relatively smooth game. Now all of the games that I've talked about so far today have been my personal favourites. Games that I have played and enjoyed, so they were easy recommendations. But there are loads of other games out there still that I've either not played or just haven't made it into my top 10 list. So there's games like Elden Ring, which actually won Game of the Year in 2022, but it's not a game that I've played. We've also got Demon's Souls, Ghost of Tsushima and the Uncharted Collection, which I have played and again it is brilliant. I also recently picked up Need for Speed Unbound, which is only available on the PlayStation 5 and not the PlayStation 4. And I'll tell you what, this has been a lot of fun to play. Then there are hundreds of PS4 games available via the backwards compatibility. So any games that you used to play on the PS4, well of course you can play them on the PS5. But on top of that you've got the PS Plus collection, which I think for most will be the best place to start. And as long as you have an active PS Plus subscription, well you get all of these games included. Games like Days Gone, God of War and Detroit. There are loads of games here worth playing.
But out of all of the games that I've shown you today, I think my favourite is either God of War Ragnarok or The Last of Us Part 1. Both are completely different reasons, but both have incredible storylines. Now drop a blue heart in the comments along with your favourite game to play right now, and I will give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my PS5 2 year review video next. And I also wanted to say a massive thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So Squarespace allows you to create amazing websites and gives you the tools to connect with your audience. You can also generate revenue through gated members only content. You can manage your members, send emails and leverage audience through the insights, all in one easy to use platform. You could create a community of your own through the commenting system, including replies and likes, as well as publishing blogs and creating a powerful e-commerce site. These third-party tools will allow you to manage inventory, promote products, and even streamline your bookkeeping and accounts. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash spawn points to save 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. Well, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, sub, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.